out. Booyah, okay. I'm um, really quick. I'm gonna show you guys um, the Rich and Rare page because I want you guys to know where to access the other recordings. So if you go to team resources um, and you go to candlesticks, all of my candlestick trainings are on this page, okay? So you got the candlestick Bible, actual PDF, um, part one, part two, part three, part four. And once this is uploaded, I will do part five, okay? But y'all remember the page, so let's get to it. Let's get to it. The last one, um, I remember what we were talking about. It was a, it was talking about top-down analysis, okay? And I want to touch on that really quick before we start because um, last call, oh, the last trade I got into, I looked at it on the one hour and it looked like it was going, it looked like how I wanted it to look, but when I looked on a bigger time frame, I actually lost a trade because it was just a pullback and like a retracement and it was a it's completely different trend. Um, so that's really, really important. And that's kind of what we learned and touched on with top-down analysis. And I'm just gonna go really quick so you guys can um, remember what, does anybody remember? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Is that gonna, is that talking about it? So top-down analysis, just to break it down, is pretty much looking at the overall market structure on the, um, what's the two best time frame guys to look at the market first? What's the best um, two time frames to look at the market um, before you start to look at the lower time frames? What's what are those two markets? I mean, what are those two um, time frames? The daily and the four hour, exactly. So what I did, I was on the one hour and I was like, oh, I think it was gonna sell. And then, and it was out of resistance and everything, but I forgot to look at the bigger time frame, and the whole time it was in an uptrend. So it wasn't going for a sell um, in the long term. You know, with Liberty, you take longer trades. So I ended up losing it because that wasn't the overall trend. So you guys can see how that plays a big part um, in, you know, making an effective trade, getting into the market at a specific time. All right. So just to touch on this, what it says, through our top-down analysis, we will start with a bigger time frame, and then those pinpoints on 70, page 70 and 71 will go over the specific things that you want to look at. But the time frame is the first important thing. Okay, and then it talks about support and resistance, market structure, what's going on in the market, is it going up, is it going down, is it choppy, is it ranging? Okay, knowing what the previous candle has done, market condition and things like that. All right, so let's go back to where we left off to 79, page 79. And like I said, guys, if at any time I get like real choppy, just let me know and I'll, um, we'll get it together, okay? So page 79 is talking about trading strategies and tactics, okay? So in the last chapters, it says you learned about three important aspects of price action trading, okay? The first aspect is market trends. Okay, so we should all know our, our three trends, three trends, all right? The second aspect is the level, right? The support or resistance levels. And the third aspect is a signal. So when anytime they refer to like a signal, they say price action signal, they're pretty much referring to a candlestick, okay? Let's read, I just wanna make sure that it's not, nothing that you guys need to write down. Definitely wanna write the, down those three things, um, market trends, level, Price action signal. All right, it says you know how to identify the market trend using multiple time frame analysis. Correct. You know how to di differentiate between trending markets and range bound markets, and you understand how each market moves. That second aspect is the level. So you know, um, you learn how to draw support and resistance levels. You know how to draw trend lines. This skill will keep um, will help you um, become better at entering in the market at the right time. Um, the third aspect is the signals. Like I said, as a candlestick, so you would understand the psychology behind this formation and the message they send you. Okay, so you should know there's um there's like from this candlestick Bible PDF alone, I believe there's five, there's six bullish and there's six harami. I mean, there's six bullish and there's six bearish candlesticks. Okay, um, the JCP app has more, but um, what I always say and I say this on every call when you're learning the candlesticks. Um, 
when you understand the psychology and the formation behind them, everything will make so much more sense. And what I did when I was learning is I would go back on my MT4 and I would find, um, I would mark up my charts or I would pull up harmonics or Liberty or Hourglass and I would mark up my chart and I would try to find these different candlesticks. And then I would be like, oh my gosh, this is a hammer. It literally went up after I seen it or little small stuff. Now I've been here for over a year now. So it's a lot of practice that I've been doing. So if you guys are on here and you've only been, you know, learning it for just a little while, you guys are already, you know, ahead of the game. All right. Three aspects, which our trend level and signal are what we will we'll use for our trading approach. Let's see, I don't think we need to see anything else. It says, when you open a chart, you will try to answer these three important questions. What is the market doing? Is it trending, consolidating, yada, yada, yada? Um, I kind of just skipped through a lot because a lot of it is just him repeating it, like just repeating the same thing over and over. So I want to make sure we just have what's really important to know. If it's a ranging market, you will see that it's horizontally between two boundaries and you want to stay away from choppy markets. Okay, cool. So we already understand all of that. Um, and if I go over anything that you guys don't understand or um, you want me to go more in depth, just stop me and um, we can talk more about it. Okay. Okay, cool. So we know all that. Let's go to page next page. All right, these levels are the best zones um, where you can buy and sell the market. They're, so they're referring to the support and resistance. What is the best signal to enter the market? The best signal to enter the market means the right time to execute when you trade. And this is what you will learn in this chapter. Okay, so now this is something that they're telling us. Um, they're telling, pretty much telling us that this pin bar, right, also known as hammer, is the one of the best um, entries, one of the best candlestick patterns to hop in on, um, but I would be hopping in um, using the hammer, right? The bullish pin bar on a support or resistance level. Which one? If I'm gonna hop in using the hammer, I would be looking for it to be where? Support or resistance? Anybody, somebody. I know somebody's paying attention. I know somebody knows the answer. Let's see. Support, exactly. Exactly. Yep. Brian, don't put support with a question mark. You got to know. Okay. So the pin bar candlestick pattern strategy. Pin bar is also known as hammer in the book. Okay. I'm not too sure if it's also for the shooting star, but I know for sure hammer, they refer to it as the pin, pin bar. Okay. Said so it's the most famous candlestick. So if you're taking notes, you want to put a star by that, by the bullish, um, the bullish pin bar, the hammer. <clears throat> All right, it's widely used by price action traders to determine reversal points in the market. It says in this section, you will learn in detail how to identify potential pin bar signals and the conditions needed for high probability setups. Meaning when they just say high probability setups, they just mean the best possible entry to take, like with um, very minimal loss, okay? Um, a pin bar is a, a candlestick, we already know that, with a very long tail that shows rejection and indicates that the market will move in the opposite direction, okay? So we already talked about um, wicks in the previous chapters, in the previous pages. Um, we talked about the wick. So when we have a long lower wick, and my people writing notes down, who may be still trying to catch up, a long lower wick is gonna just give you, um, it's gonna tell you that there's a lot of bullish momentum. So the buyers are in control a lot of high buying pressure, okay? And I'm slowing it down a little bit so people have time to write. <clears throat> and then if you have a um, long upper wick, that is high selling pressure, high selling momentum, okay? So it's important to understand these, um, you know, understand these different um, candlesticks now. All right, it says the area between the open and close is called the body. So this right here, let me scroll in. This is the long tail, and then we have the body, okay? So this is the body, this is the tail, all right? And what happened was um, the market opened bullish, so it opened from here, shot all the way up, and then it got, um, it got rejected by the sellers, and that's when it comes down and creates this little body, <clears throat> okay? Oh, no, I lied. I lied to you guys. I lied. So... Did I? 
So this is the open. I'm trying to think. Sometimes it gets confusing, y'all, when you're thinking about the open and the close of the candles. The selling candle opens from the top. It goes down and then it shoots up. Yeah. Okay. So I was, I was right. I was right. Um, but you don't really need to know all that. The only thing you need to know is um, the body and the tail. Yes, Brian. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Um, a bullish pin bar is known for its lower wicks. The bearish one is known for its long upper wicks. The color of the candlestick is not quite important. Okay. Um, however, bullish candles with the white real body are more powerful than candles with the real black body. So long story short, um, unless it is a candlestick, unless it is a two or three pattern candlestick, then the, the color doesn't matter. Okay, it's just the formation. So you need to write that down if you're taking notes. All right, write that down if you're taking notes that it doesn't matter um, about the color of the candlestick, it's the formation, unless it is um, a two or three candlestick pattern. And can somebody, just to make sure that I'm paying attention, somebody drop um, a few candlestick patterns that have two or three candlesticks, any, any candlestick pattern that has two or three and not just one candlestick. So we got 25, 20 some people on here. So you guys should know, especially if you guys have been here since day one, you should have at least um, some, some idea of um, candlestick patterns with two or three candlesticks. I don't see enough people in the chat talking and I don't like that. So I'm gonna I'm wait. I'm gonna wait for y'all to come back to y'all phones and, and, and start paying attention. I'm gonna need about 10 answers. We got, two, we got about 30 people, so really 15. We really 15, at least half people should really be paying attention. I see eight question answers. Let me get two more people to answer. If you wasn't paying attention and you didn't hear the question, I said to name a candlestick pattern that has two or three candlesticks in the actual pattern. I see nine messages. I'm gonna open that. I'm gonna open it up at ten. I want to make sure y'all are paying attention. I need one more person to respond. There we go. Okay, let's see. Harami and engulfing. Yep. So that was correct, Ruth. Those have two. The crow. The the Leah. The three black crows. Yes. Um, BBC, what's BBC, Bryant? Am I tripping with BBC? B I don't know what BBC is. Um, Virginia, Morningstar, Engulfing Harami, correct. Alexandria, Bullish Engulfing, and Shooting Star, correct. Those, those are correct. Oh, no, 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 not Shooting Star, Alexandria. Shooting Star is just one. Um, Bullish Engulfing is two, so that's correct. Oceana, yep. Engulfing, Harami, Tweezers, Bottoms, Evening Star. This is my first candlestick session. Okay, hey, Brian, welcome, welcome. Evening Star, okay, cool. So we know the different patterns that have two to three. So if it's single, like Shooting Star or Hammer, you don't have to worry too much about the color, just understand the formation, okay? So they're showing you a picture of the pin bar. Okay, let's go to the next page. Now it says, bearish oops bearish pin bar so this is just the complete opposite they look the exact same but flipped you guys see that bullish pin bar right here and then you have the bearish pin bar it's literally just flipped all right how to identify pin bar candlestick setups okay so how do you know when you sh when you see them you know how do you know when to get in he says, to be honest, quality price action setups don't exist in the market, right? Because you will see that sometimes you can find a high probability setup, but then it doesn't go how you ended it, right? Um, that happens a few times because the market doesn't move due to pin bar formation. It moves um, in the, the law of supply and demand, okay? Oops, what happened? What happened? What happened? Okay. So it says uh, the market doesn't move based off of candlesticks that moves based off of the law of supply and demand. So he says, let's give you an example. If you identify a quality pin bar candle near a support key level, right? Because that's where you're supposed to be looking for it in an uptrend market. This is a powerful buying signal to take. You shouldn't ignore it. But if the amount of money that buyers put into this trade is less than the amount that sellers put in, right? 
then the marker will not go in your predicted direction, okay? So I want y'all to understand, um, even when you're marking up a chart, I know some of us have marked up charts. You done, you done looked at the four hour, you looked at the, the daily, you looked at the one hour, you looked at the five minute, you're at a support level, you're trying to take it up. Every time frame you looked, it was in an uptrend. Now, nine times, Nine times out of 10, if you have all of those confirmations, you won't lose the trade, but it could happen, okay? Because it's not 100%, all right? And he just told you it's based off supply and demand. So if the signal fails, it doesn't mean your analysis was wrong, right? Or the pin bars don't work or the candlesticks don't work. It just means that the market didn't validate your decision. Therefore, just accept your loss and look for another opportunity, right? Simple. You may ask yourself, why should we look for quality pin bar setups if the market doesn't respect them? Which is a really good question. If if you marking up the charts and you still can't get good entries and the candlesticks still don't tell you, like people think stuff like that, like, oh, it doesn't work. Candlesticks don't work. I don't know, this doesn't work, right? So he's basically saying, why should I respect it if it's not 100% guaranteed? Because as you know, trading is a game of probabilities. There's no certainty. This is why you should evaluate your pin bar setups from multiple angles, right? The best that you can, four hour, daily, one hour. And the fact that you're looking for quality setups means that you're trying to put the, the probabilities of success in your favor, which is the right mindset of successful traders. So you're doing what you're supposed to be doing not like me when I lost a trade the other day, I wasn't thinking like a successful trader because I was too trying to get so caught up into the trade and I forgot to look at the bigger time frames, and then I screwed myself on that one, right? But if you're thinking and you have the right mindset of a successful trader, then you are going to make sure that you do all of those other things. You get what I'm saying? To make sure that you um, clear your trade. Nobody wants to lose, right? You want to be able to hop up, you know, like these multi-millionaires and call a, call a trader to make your money and get off, okay? And the only way you're going to be able to do that is if, is if you have that knowledge and if you know what you're doing and if you're patient, okay? All right, so determine whether or not, a, to, to determine whether or not a pin bar is worth trading, this price action signal should respect the following criteria, Okay. The pin bar formed in a bigger time frame, such as a four hour or the daily, should be taken into consideration because if you look at smaller time frames, you can easily spot a lot of pin bar signals. These setups should be ignored because smaller time frames generate a lot of false signals. Okay. Smaller time frames generate a lot of false signals. So maybe you guys have noticed, right? Maybe like I've seen a few times, like I've been on a five minute, right? I've been on a five minute, maybe looking for a, maybe looking for a buy, right? I'm looking for a buy, I'm on the five minute and I get a huge bearish engulfing. And then I just keep getting a lot of bearish momentum, right? And some of some people may think, oh my gosh, this market's about to turn. Um, my analysis is wrong. It's actually going to go into a, um, a downtrend. Um, this is never going to go back up. It's probably going to be doing this for a while, but then you're on a smaller time frame, right? If you look at the bigger time frame, it may be in an uptrend overall. It just may be in a retracement or in a pullback. And that is just the time that you're looking at the market. So a lot of people, you'll see them um, just waiting, like they're waiting for an entry point. They're waiting for the market to come to a certain area to take it back up. All right. Drop some ones if you, you're still with me, you understand. You, 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 it's, you, it's coming to you easy. You, you, you good. I can move forward. Let me know. Ones. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Um, so let's look here. So I think we're done with this page. Oh yeah, we're done with this page. Okay, cool. On to the next. Boom. Oh, I love when we just go past all the pages. I love it. Um. Oops. So let's look at this picture that they have. It says CAD CHF. Ooh, I don't know who trades that pair, but this is what we're supposedly supposed to be looking at. Okay, in this Bible, the white ones um, indicate the bullish ones, and then the black ones indicate the bearish ones. Okay, 
So it's saying pin bar in a daily time frame. That's what it wants us to look at. This is a pin bar in the daily, looking at the daily, right? And this is, is you see where it's at. It's at a support level, right? It's not in the middle of a trend. It's not at the top. It's right here at the bottom of a support level. And we're looking at the daily. So that means this whole day, the market was buying. Remember, when you're looking at candlesticks, that's what it's telling you. So the next day, the market was selling. Okay, this is a shooting star. The next day, the whole day, the market was buying. All right, so you're looking at it on a daily time frame. The pin bar formed in line with the direction of the market is more powerful than the one which is formed against the trend. Okay, if you can identify a clear trend, that means you know who is in control of the market. So what trend are we looking at right now? Are we looking at a ranging market, consolidation, uptrend, downtrend? What are we looking at here? What are we looking at here? Shout out to my girl, Leah and Jeremiah. Shout out to y'all for the answer in the first. We're in the uptrend, We're clear as day. And you know for sure it's in the uptrend because what? Because we're on a daily time frame. We're not on the, we're not even on the five minute on a lower time frame. We're on the daily. So this means every single day. Look, every single day this market was buying, 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 all the way up. This is not the five minute, it's not the one minute, it's not the hour. This is a daily. So we know for sure this is an option, right? Now, um, and, and even if you're, and this just came to, to mind just now, even if sometimes you have all those confirmations, right? And then let's say that day you have the, and, then it, and it's selling all day, right? But if you see the bearish candlestick right next to the red box, this one was selling all day, but it was just in a retracement, okay? It was just in a retracement to go, the next day it went completely bullish and just completely engulfed that next candle. So a lot of times, sometimes you may catch that retracement is, you know, even if your analysis is correct, sometimes you just catch the, the retracement and you just lose it, you know, but you live to trade another day. It's not the end of the world. That's why we follow proper risk management, you know, and, and, and that's all. So, all right, it says the formation of this candlestick pattern with the trend makes it so effective. Okay, see the chart below. So let's look. So it says pin bars with the trend. Okay, so we're in an uptrend, right? We're in an uptrend market. This one is the daily. So if you look at the top left, it's AUD and ZD. It's the daily. So we're looking at this in an uptrend. Okay, so the only type of, um, and I want you guys to answer this in the chat. The only type of candlestick patterns I should be looking for, right, is what? That's the first question. And then where should I be looking for them at? And I, I like to have y'all repeat it because y'all, it's a few people that always mix it up and get it confused. What should I be looking for in this uptrend and where should I be looking for them at? I need, that's two, that's a two part question. So let's see who, who's really goaded. Let's see who really knows. Uh-oh, uh-oh, do we not know? Dang, nobody knows? What should you be looking for? A call at a, in a, at a low? Okay, no. Okay, so in an uptrend, you should be looking for what type of, yes, Alexandria, yes, 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 okay? a bullish pin bar. You should be looking for bullish candlestick patterns in general, not just a pin bar, but you should be looking for bullish candlestick patterns, okay? And you should be looking for them at the support level. Does everybody understand that? We are, we, that we, that's something we've already covered. It's not a trick question or anything, but does everybody understand that? Drop, drop yes in the chat so I know. Does everybody understand it? So if I'm looking at this uptrend, right? I should be looking for the bullish, patterns at the support level, okay? All right, so y'all tell me, what should I do? What if I came in, right, and the market was, and I wish I could mark on this computer. Can I draw? Let's see if it lets me draw. So what if I came in, oh, I could draw. What if I came in and the market was right here? 
Y'all let me know what I should do. Can I hop in right now? Should I just hop in right now and kind of just roll over and roll over um, my entry point? Or what, what should I do? Should I take a 30 minute trade? Like y'all tell me. Y'all are saying, wait, what should I wait for? Let me know what, what, what am I waiting for? Why I can't get in right now? What's wrong? Why I can't get in right now? The market's in an uptrend. I can just take it up, right? And wait until it hits your trend line. You can wait for that. That's a really good answer. For the candle to be bullish. Mm, the reversal is the answer that I was looking for. The pullback, the retracement, yes. Also, who said the trend line? That was actually a good answer. Who said that? Let me go back up. Erica, so yes. So if you have a trend line up, right? If you have a trend line, and sorry, this is a little marker, guys. It's not gonna be perfect. If you have a trend line, okay? Um, nine times out of 10, and I think they're gonna talk about trend lines and stuff. And if they don't, it's fine. But on the trend line, the market comes in it. It always taps it. It come. It's always going to the trend line. So if that's easier for you, of course you can go to the trend line because it actually did come to the trend line right here. Came to the trend line, and if you would have took it there, you would have been fine. Okay. Also, the retracement, the pullback, the reversal. All those answers are correct. Wait for the reversal because if you would have got in here, you would have been. You would have lost the trade. Unless you were trading forex, you would have just been in pullback, really big drawdown. But in HFX, you would have lost a trade. Or you would have to keep rolling over, rolling over, rolling over, rolling over. I don't even know how many times you would have rolled over before you actually cleared. Okay? Especially if you got your entry up here. You wouldn't have cleared until somewhere probably over here. Somewhere over here probably. Okay? So you always want to wait for that pullback to make sure that... Um, you get the best possible entry, okay? So that was really good. Um, so it shows you pin bars with the trend, okay? Which are the hammer, right? The ones in the green boxes, those are the hammers. They're showing you those are pin bars with the trend and they're um, even closer to the trend line. But then it shows you pin bars against the trend that are in the, um, the red boxes. What, what candlestick is that? That's in the red boxes, guys. Let me know what candlesticks those are. Bearish. Yes, they're bearish, correct. But what 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 is the name of that candlestick? Yes, Alexandria is killing it. Oh my goodness, yes. Okay, so shooting star, those are the shooting stars. So they're saying those are pin bars against the trend. These are pin bars with the trend, okay? So let's go back out. Let's go to page 85. So it says, as you can see in the chart above, bullish pin bars that were formed in line with the uptrend worked. They should be taken into consideration. But the bearish ones that were formed against the trend should be ignored. Those were false signals. And you shouldn't even be looking for bearish patterns in an uptrend anyway, right? You should be looking for bullish. So the bearish ones are going to be false, false signals. It says the anatomy of a pin bar is important as well. You have to make sure that the candlestick is a pin bar by looking at the distance between the real body and the tail. Pin bars with longer tails are more powerful. Okay, that's something that I would not um, put like a little star by, take a note. Okay, pin bars with longer tails are more powerful, which makes sense. Because if they're longer, it's more power, more bullish momentum, more bearish momentum. If they're shorter, it's not that much momentum, okay? The psychology behind the pin bar candle formation, okay? Now we're in this section. Pin bars are formed when price, prices are rejected. This rejection doesn't indicate a reversal signal. Um, it says pin bars are formed when prices are rejected. This rejection doesn't indicate a reversal signal because this price action setup can form anywhere in your chart. 
Okay. Um, so like, for example, like the pin bars in here, um, the fake pin bars that we were looking at right here, just because they formed, it didn't indicate a reversal signal. It was just a false, a false price action signal. Okay. The most important areas to watch when trading pin bars are major level key levels, such as support and resistance, supply and demand zones, and moving averages. Okay. So pretty much it's it has a whole chapter just talking about pin bars. So that can just tell you right then and there, like, okay, pin bars are important. Pin bars are an important candlestick um, pattern. And that's the one you should be looking for when you guys are marking up your charts. And even if we go look at some charts right now, I guarantee that we'll see a lot of pin bars at support resistance levels, okay? It says, um, the formation of this candlestick chart pattern and these levels give a clear idea about what happens in the market. If the rejection was near a support level, for example, this is an obvious indication that the bulls are more powerful and they are willing to push the market to go upward. I'm gonna read that again. The formation of this candlestick chart pattern and these levels give a clear idea about what happens in the market. Okay, if the rejection was near support level, for example, this is an obvious, obvious indication that the bulls are more powerful. Okay, they are willing to push the market to go up forward. So they're gonna show you an example, right? On page 86, okay? And it's showing you um, a pin bar at a support level, okay? And I actually want y'all to take a look through here. What actually happened over here? Can somebody tell me what happened through this? Because this, this was originally a resistance level, but now it's a support level. But what happened here? There's one word and it starts with a B that I'm, and I'm, think, I'm thinking of. What happened right there? And it starts with a B. Let's see who gets it first. Breakout, yes, Candace. So in, Obviously, I can't really see that here, but you know, just me thinking in my trading mindset, this probably was um, a, a level of support. I mean, a level of resistance that it just broke through because every time this happens, when something breaks through, let me see if I can get my little marker out again. Every time something where it just breaks through completely, right? It always comes back and, and, and makes and creates its own support level all over again. And that's what it did. So that's how I know it broke out because when in breakouts that happens, it breaks out and then it comes and retraces and creates a new support level. So that's how I just knew from just doing this so many times. Break and retest. Alexandria, you're killing it. You're killing it right now. You are killing it. Okay. So very easy, very easy, right? Um, break and retest. So in this case, this says the formation of this candlestick occurs near a resistance level. Um, if the, let me read this again. If the formation of this candlestick occurs near a resistance level, it indicates that the bears reject prices and prevent the bulls from breaking this level. So this means that the sellers are wishing to push the market downward. Okay, so it's talking about this one. Okay, so it's kind of confusing because this one is talking about this and then the previous paragraph is talking about this picture. But pretty much it was saying this pin bar should be at a support level indicating the uptrend. It's saying this picture should be a um, pin bar at a resistance level, the shooting star, right? At a resistance level um, to go down for the downtrend. Same thing here, break and retest. Break through the resistance, um, break through the support and then bottom and create a new resistance level. Break and retest, break and retest. Okay. If it says, if you understand the psychology behind this price action pattern formation, you will be able to predict what is likely to happen in the future. And you will make good trades based on high probability pin bar signals. Okay. How are we feeling right now? If you're good, drop some ones. If you need me to go over something, drop, drop a two. If you need me to go back to something, if you need me to elaborate on something more, drop a two. If you're good and you're understanding and it's making sense, just drop a one and let me know. All right, let me know, let me know, let me know. Where are we, what are we, how are we feeling? How are we feeling? Okay, 
everybody is saying that they're good. Um, so we can either stop here or we can finish these two, um, these four pages, which they don't look too hard, um, but that's gonna be up to y'all. So we can finish these four. I didn't wanna put too much on you guys, but if you wanna finish these four pages and then we'll stop after that. They said, let's get it, let's get it, let's get it. Is everybody cool with that? So we're gonna finish these last four and then we'll end up on page, oh, we'll, we would have done good. Okay, that's good. Okay, so let's finish. Okay, cool. All right. So trading the pin bar candlestick with the trend. That's what this section is talking about. Trading the pin bar candlestick with the trend. Okay. If you are a beginner trader, it says, I highly recommend you to stick with the trend because pin bars that occur in trending markets offer good trading opportunities with high risk to reward ratio. Okay. So just, just stick to pin bars that occur in trending markets that are pin bars that occur in their, you know, their, the market that they're supposed to. So if it's a shooting star in the bearish markets, if it's a hammer, then in the bullish markets. It says when you master trading it with the trend, you can then move to trade range bound markets or even counter trends. Okay. And I think it's going to talk a little bit about range bound markets because I think it keeps bringing that up, but I don't remember ever talking about that in here. So I guess it's going to go over that later on, what that is. Um, this strategy is simple. You start by identifying a clear uptrend or downtrend. You wait for a pin bar to occur after a pullback to support a resistance level. So I think we just actually talked about this. Let's go this, let me read that one more time. You start by identifying a clear trend, right? Identify whether it's an uptrend or downtrend, and then you wait for a pin bar to occur after a pullback to a supporter resistance level. So that's pretty much what we always, what I always talk about with you guys is waiting for the pullback and then you can get in on the pin bar and that will be your confirmation to get into the market. So it's literally telling you when to get in and how. Um, the figure below shows how this price action signal works if it is traded with the trend. As you can see, the price was rejected from the resistance level, which indicates that the bears are still in charge of the trend, okay? So we're clearly, and just from looking at this, I can tell that we're in a downtrend, right? Um, just for the sake of this um, image right here, we're in a downtrend, okay? So it says, um, it says at this resistance level, the price was rejected. Okay, the price is rejected. And if it's especially rejected at a resistance level, that is high quality confirmation. Like, okay, you know, this market is, the sellers are not letting the buyers take any control right now. They're still in control. Okay, that pin bar would have been your entry point. So pretty much what it's saying is guys, um, like, especially, well, for this case, like specifically for this case, um, cause it, you could wait for a pullback and maybe like, oh, okay, it's going to pull back right here and then I can get in, but it's just saying, you know, wait for it to come to that resistance level and give you that pin bar confirmation, wait for that confirmation. Then you can hop in. Um, so it says the formation of the pin bar indicates the end of the retracement. Okay. Write that down. This book is getting saucy. It says the pin bar indicates the end of the retracement move. Y'all heard that? Did y'all hear it? Did y'all write that down? The pin bar indicates the end of the retracement move and the beginning of the impulse move at the resistance level in line with the downtrend. That is, a, I would put a thousand stars by that because that is some sauce right there. That is some sauce, okay? This is a high quality setup because all of the following criteria are respected. So let's go through the steps. The pin bar is well formed and is aligned with the direction of the market. Okay, it's a pin bar. It's a it's a shooting star. It's aligned with um, the trend line. It's aligned with the resistance level. It, the, it says number two, the rejection occurred at a major key level, a major resistance level, which represents a hot point in the market. And then three, the risk to reward ratio is good and it's worth trading. Okay, so it's saying like, the risk to reward, um, reward ratio because you actually waited um, and you got a really good entry. So, you know, your profits 
um, and your reward will be really good, opposed to you have getting in over here somewhere and, you know, risking it here um, instead of risking it up here in the, in, the, in the market. Sometimes even if the market is trending, we can't draw support and resistance levels because price moves in a certain way, which we can't spot um, key levels. If you're in this situation, you can use the 21 moving average, which will act as a dynamic support and an uptrend and a dynamic resistance and a downtrend. It says, see the illustration below. So this um, indicator, you should have access to that um, on Liberty and Hourglass, you should be able to pull up the 21 moving average. Okay, so let's look at it. it. Says 21 moving average acts as a resistance level. Okay. Okay, so it, the 21 moving average acts as a resistance level, the pin bar in line with the downtrend. So it, like we just said, and you, some of y'all answered that, you, um, I think it was Erica, you said, um, the pin bar and wait for it to go to your trend line. That's pretty much what it's doing. It went to the trend line, gave us a signal, um, and then you were able to take it here or um, most likely on the next candle, you were able to take that down. So it says, um, so it says, as you can see in the chart below or the chart above, the market was trending down. Using the 21 moving average helps us to identify dynamic resistance levels and high probability pin bar setups. Now it's gonna show us an example for a buy, same thing. We have a 21 moving average and an uptrend, confirmation on the trend line with the hammer um, and, we, and we are in profit and we got a good entry point and we're good to go. It says the, the four hour chart above illustrates how the 21 moving average could help us find key points in the market. So they use this on the four hour time frame. Okay, so if you're writing that down, you need to look at it on the four hour time frame because on the smaller time frames, it may be false signals. Okay, um, when price approaches the moving average, the, the buying pressure takes place in the market and the price goes up. Um, so, vice versa for when price approaches the moving average um, on the downtrend, that's going to tell you that the market is um, going down. The pin bar signal is clear on the chart because the trend is bullish. Um, it says the pin bar is clear on the chart because the trend is bullish. The price action setup has a bullish anatomy as well. And the rejection from the 21 moving average is a confirmation signal to buy the market. Now, just out of curiosity, I want to go and pull up Liberty. I'm gonna pull up Liberty and I wanna see if you were able to um, use 21 moving average on there. Let's see. All right. So let's, let's see if, if it actually, we can pull up indicators and you can pull up, type in 21 or maybe you just do moving average. Okay, all these different moving averages, you can probably just use, just click on one of them. Oh, I already added one. Dang, I added two of them, I didn't mean to do that. So let's go on, it says on the four hour. If we go on the four hour, Liberty already has like a thousand lines. I bet one of these lines are already probably the moving average, honestly. There's so many lines. So you really won't be able to tell. But if you're looking at this, yeah, they have lines everywhere. You might have to pull it up on a regular chart, like on harmonics or something. Let's try on harmonics. And then this is this will be the last thing that we do. I just want to see if this works. All right, let's look at this one. Like I said, this is a refresher for me, even with the candlestick Bible. With the candlestick Bible. Let's just do a regular moving average. So it's just saying if you put this on the four hour, um, Okay, so look at this, guys. Look, look, look. 
Um, so this one is ooh, GBP JPY on the four hour. And if we look at that blue line, that's the moving average. And it says it acts as a support of resistance level. Um, so let's look, so let's look. So So it kind of, if you look in, if you're looking at it, it kind of shows you like if you if you're looking at certain areas, um, and obviously you can't just use the moving average. You'd have to have your support and your resistance marked up, and then you'd have the moving average just as an extra indicator. But you can see that um, like the candles, the candles form close to it, right? It's forming close to it, and if honestly, if you take them. Like if I put, let me show you guys. Honestly, if you take them at these support levels, at the trend lines, um, if you take them there, it's different ones. Um, they are showing you which way the market could go. Um, they're not something that you could just use on its own. I can just tell by looking at it. Um, but like I can tell, like if I was looking at this in a downtrend, um, once it hit this moving average, it went down. And once it hit it again, it went down. Um, but obviously, like I said, you want to have your trend line and things like that um, up uh, along with this um, moving average. But they're going to go over a lot of different indicators and things that you can use um, in the chemistry bubble. So. That is all that we'll do for today. We are left off for my people taking notes. We are on page 92. So go ahead and write that down so y'all can remind me next call. We are on page 92. All right. And I'm going to stop the recording.